Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 88. The 3088, 3 is 20 candidate, we are in the third edition, third edition, day 88, we are on page number 296. And today we'll discuss the topic of quartiles and the box plot. Box plot is also sometimes known as box, box and whisker plot. So what do quartiles do? What purpose do they serve? Well, just like yesterday and the day before yesterday, we talked about the concept of central tendency. Concept of central tendency tells, tells us where, where do the data tend to cluster around what, what value. And there are three tools that we discussed there that help us give that idea, the mean, median, and mode. Just like that, there are three tools we will have at our disposal to give us some idea as to how far apart the, the data is, how spread out it is, the dispersion is called, the measure of disbursement. There are three tools we have from, from the least sophisticated to the most sophisticated. Here are the three tools. There are three ways. There are three ways to measure dispersion. How widespread how widespread the data is is it all clustered together around one value or is it does it is all spread out too far apart the first and the simplest and the crudest one is the range the range range really doesn't much doesn't really tell us much it just tells you the difference between the greatest and the smallest it just tells you what was the largest value in your observations and what was the smallest value is simply the greatest minus the least the lowest value and that's what it is as I said it's a very crude way but it give it does give us some idea as to what we're dealing with for example if a teacher gave you if the teacher gave you an exam to 100 students let's say or 80 students doesn't matter and teacher tells you nothing else it she, she doesn't tell you the mean or anything else she simply tells you that the highest score in the class was 98 and the lowest was 86 on a on a on an exam which goes from 0 to 100 well, that's pretty good. Highest was 98, that's more, the lowest was 86, which means a lot of people did very well. On the other hand, she tells you that she, the exam that she just gave you, the highest score was 92 and the lowest was 22. Well, that's a different story. Which means there's a lot of variety there, a lot of variation. It's very dispersed. There are some people who did very poorly and maybe there are some people who did very well. So it does give you some idea, do you understand? The next one, which is actually a little bit better, a little bit more sophisticated, sophisticated tool, which is what we know, or which, which is what we what we call interquartile, interquartile range. It is a range of not the whole observations, not the whole entire data set, but only the range of the middle fifty percent. Of the observation range of the middle 50% of the observation. So again, teacher can either tell you that uh, the exam that was the exam that was just returned to you that she tells you the lowest score was 92 and the highest score was 90, 98. But that's the range. It gives you some idea as opposed to the first scenario that I described to you where she tells you that the highest score was 98 and the lowest was 86. Again, the range is very small, which means a lot of people did very well. There was not a lot. Uh, there was not a, dis, a dis, There was there wasn't a great deal of disparity with the people who did poorly in that case, poorly being in the 80s, and the people who did very well. They were all very together, very very much together. Here in this thing, it's very different. So that's one way, which is the range, or she can tell you the interquartile range. The range of the middle 50 percent of the population. So if she tells you that the interquartile range was 36 to 68, 36 to 68, what does it tell us? It tells us, so the teacher tells you that this exam that you just took, the maximum that you could obtain was 100 points, and in this exam, the interquartile range was 36 to 68, and she tells you nothing else. Well, what did she just tell us? Well, what she told us is that the 50% of the class, 
50% of the class is scored between 36 and 68. But we know nothing at all about the bottom, bottom 25%. The bottom 25%, the bottom 25% is dropped. It may, we make no mention of it. Similarly, the top 25% is dropped. When we're talking about interquartile range, it's only the fifth, you know, only the only the middle fifty percent that we discuss. We just ignore the bottom twenty-five percent. We ignore the top twenty twenty-five percent. But that's actually much better. That's actually a much better tool, more much more useful tool than simply having the range of the entire population. Well, fifty percent is between thirty-six and sixty-eight. Yeah, that's I guess is better than than uh, than from twenty to. 50, let's say. Do you understand? The last tool that we have, which is actually the most sophisticated, and therefore it will also require the most amount of work because it requires calculation. And third tool is what is known as the standard deviation. Standard deviation. In this video today, we will do nothing, to, nothing at all with having to do with standard deviation because it requires some work. It requires calculation, and we'll do that in tomorrow's video. Tomorrow's video, we'll do the example that you see there at the bottom of page number two ninety-seven, example two point four point two point eight. Uh, we have a data set that is given to us, and we'll calculate the standard deviation uh, by hand using the five-step process that is described in the book. It involves five very simple steps. And we'll learn that tomorrow, standard deviation. But when we're dealing with quartiles, we are looking at the range and the interquartile range, of course. Interquartile range cannot be found unless we know the quartile. So let's do one, shall we? Let's do an example. There are Let's do an example using the exam using the uh, let's do let's, let's do an example using what is given to us in the book. Example four point four point two point six. Example four point two point six. It is a continuation of four point two point five. You understand? So we have sixteen observations here. Sixteen uh, sixteen uh, values. Let's put them on the blackboard. We have a two, four, four, a five, and seven sixes. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Two eights, and then four nines. Voila. The sixteen observations. Four here, four here, eight, then four and four and four. So there are sixteen observations. If you want to divide them into twenty-five percent each, each quartile will have four observations because four times four is sixteen. It's very simple. So, what is our first quartile? Well, the first quartile, one, two, three, four, between the fourth and the fifth, right here. The average of the two. Average of the two is five plus seven over two. The first quartile is six. What is the second quartile? One, two, three, four, and it's between the eighth and the ninth observation, but they are both the same value, so second quartile is just seven. And finally, the third quartile, Third quartile will be the marker. Third quartile will be the demarcation between the bottom 75% of the observation and the top 25% of the observation. And we can count 12 uh, observations from this end, or we simply count four observations from that end. And four, they are all nines right here, four observations. So it is the average of eight and nine. Eight plus nine over two, which is simply eight and a half. Once we have the quartiles located, we can, we can we are ready to plot what is known as a box plot. What is known as a box plot. I'm just going to put six there instead of writing it like this. There we go. Let's do the box plot. The observation go from two to nine, so let's just go from one to ten. One, or better yet, go from zero to ten. Zero to ten. Because had we done from one to ten, I would have had to put the marker for each one, two, three, four. Let's do it by two. Two, four, six, eight, and ten. There we go. Two, four, six, eight, and ten. So this is our scale. Let's plot it, shall we? Let's, let's plot it. The lowest value we have is two, so it's going to begin with two. The highest value we have is nine. Right here is nine. Right there. 
So when we when we have a box plot, when we have a box plot, the beginning point and the end point, now we can very clearly see the range. The range of this observation, if we didn't have this, pretend that we don't have this value, all we have is the box plot. You can see it starts at 2, it ends at 9, the range is 7. The second now it well, now we look at all the quartiles. The first quartile was 6, right here. The second quartile was 7, right here. And the third quartile was 8.5. This is 8, this is 9, this is 8.5, right here. Let's connect all, all of them here. Eight and a half, not nine, I don't know what that nine is the end point. I'm not paying attention. Eight and a half. Nine was the end point, nine is the highest value right there. Well, there we go. We are all done. Let's, let's clean it up a little bit so it looks a little bit better. There we go. That's what a box plot is supposed to look like. Let's see what it tells us. First thing we notice is that the highest value is 9, the lowest value is 2. So that tells us the range. Range is 9 minus 2, which is 7. The first quartile is 6. Right here is the first quartile, that's 6. And the third quartile is 8.5. What does it tell us? It tells us that the 50% of the observation in this data set fell between 6 and 8.5. And between 6 Eight and, a, eight and a half. This this is this is the marker for the box in the box plot. Box plot has a box in it, and that box always indicates the middle 50% of the observation. As you can see, it's skewed. It's very it's very much to the side. It's in, middle it doesn't mean that it sits in the middle of this scale here. That's the whole point. It's right here. So the scale, the lowest score is 2, the highest score is 9, and despite the fact that the lowest score was only 2 and the highest score is 9 with a range of 7, 50% of the observation in this data set fell between 6 and 8.5. And As you can clearly see here, this, this, is the, this is the bottom 25%, and then middle 50% is right here. 4 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4 right here. That's your middle 50%. From 50% from of the observations are, if you, if, in other words, if you scored a 6, if you scored a 6, 75% of the observation, 75% of the people scored above you, or if you scored 8.5, if you happen to score exactly 8.5, then 75% of the people scored below you. It starts, it starts at 6, Start, see right here, it, it, even though when it's written now it looks like this, but in the box plot it's like here, from 6 to 8.5. The last thing that the box plot tells us always is the median, which is, which is of course very important, which is of course very important information. Median, let's use a different color. I thought I had another one more color. Oh, there it is, green color, right here. It shows you the median. Right here, that's the median. or the 50th percentile. What does it tell us? Whatever that value happens to be, in this case it was, uh, well if it was 7 it shouldn't be way over here, 7 should have seven should have fallen here somewhere. 6 and 7, let me move it this thing. Median was 7, and if this is 6, if this is 6 and this is 8, 7 is right here somewhere in the middle, let's move it. Voilà. Which, which is a little bit better because before the marker was sitting in the middle, it cannot be in the middle because it goes not from 6 to 8, it goes from 6 to 8.5, so it's got to be a little bit to the left. That's the 7. What does it tell us? It tells us that that value, value of 7 in this case, is the median, which means 50% of the observations are above it, 50% of the observations are below it. It is a 50th percentile. And that's about it. That's the box, the so-called box plot also known as box and whisker because you have a box which tells us the 50% of the observation box always gives us where the 50% of the observation fell from the from the beginning of the 50th percentile to the end of the 75th percentile or 
or rather 25th percentile, the 75th percentile, the middle 50 percent. That's the so-called box, and the whisker is the line that you see in the middle, which which indicates not necessarily in the middle, but the line that that indicates the median. And that can be anywhere. That line could be could have been here, could have been here. It just tells you what the median is. Do you understand? Let's let's look at the next problem that they give us on the next page, page 297, 2.4.2.7. Where we are given two lists, two box, two box plot, and we are asked to make some observations. So we're going to first put them on the blackboard, and we'll make the observations. Four point two point seven on the next page. Let's try. Let's let's plot the first one. Now the the box plot that you're going to see on the blackboard that, that you're going to work with is a little different than what you see in the book because in the book they give you some weird values. We can we're just going to make it simple. We're going to have a nice even values here. That's that's easy to deal with. So don't go strictly by what you see on the blackboard and what you see in the book. It's going to be a little bit different. So here we go. Our scale is going to go from 100 all the way to 800. All the way up to 800 because as you can see in both list 1 and list 2 the values do not go above 800 so I don't know why they had the need to go plot the scale all the way up to 900 they they stop well below 800 so let's just stop it here so this is 100 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 we should have stopped here or I can be more generous instead of making it so stingy One, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. There we go. One hundred, eight hundred. So that's our scale. Let me read right. I don't like it. That's why I like to go from zero because then you can cut it into equally. Let's go from zero to eight hundred. It makes it much easier to do the scale. 0 to 800, which means halfway somewhere here is 400, and half of that is 200, and half of that is 600. You see? It makes it, makes it much easier. So that's our scale. We need the room, obviously. We need to erase this thing. The first one, we are told that the lowest value you have is 200. The highest value we are told is 750. 750, and this goes from 600 to 800. Half of that is 700, and 750 is going to be right here. That's the highest value. This is the lowest value. 200 and 750. We are told that the first quartile marker is at 300. And the third quartile marker is at 700. Once we have the first quartile marker and the third quartile marker, we have our box. Let's put it in the box. We have our box because that is the 50th percentile in the middle. It's the middle 50th percentile. We have left out the bottom 25th percentile. In other words, the bottom 25% of the people, the bottom 25% of the people is scored between 200 and 300, and the top 25% of the people is scored between 700 and 750 because 7, 750 is the highest. So the top 25 percentile is scored in the range of 50 points between 700 and 750, but the bottom 25 percent of people scored in the range of 200 to 300, a range of 100. Let's, let's clean it up a little bit. Voilà. Now we, what we need is the median. Where is the marker for the 50th percentile? Here, here the marker for 50th percentile falls at 450. So here is the 500, there is 500, 450 is going to be somewhere here. Even though it looks very much different than what you see in the book, but it is actually very similar if you pay attention, if you look at it closely. I'm just making sure, yes. Do you understand? Now let's plot the second one. 
in the second data set we are told that the lowest observation we have is 250. Not 200, but 250. That's right here. And the highest observation we have is 700, not 750. The first quartile here is at 400. And the third quartile we have here is 600. Let's put a box around it. That's the middle 50% of the population. And as, you can clearly, as we can clearly see, putting, putting the two lists together, we can clearly see that it does give us some idea of dispersion. We can clearly see that this, the first data set has a greater dispersion between, think of it, in, if you like, you can think of, it, think of it in terms of money also. Maybe this is the average income, average weekly income, average monthly income, whatever it is, of some household you surveyed in the two different countries or two different states. And you can clearly see that in this town or in this state, there are a lot of poor people, there are some rich people, of course, but here the difference between the rich and the poor is not great. It goes, it goes from 200 to 750. Here, it goes from 250, goes from 250 to 700. And the middle 50% of the population here had an income of, of between I forget what, I, what we said this was, this must have been 300, between 300 and 700. The middle 50% of the population had a score or income, if you like, between 300 and 700. Here is very much condensed. You see, it gives you the idea, very good idea as to what this spread is. What is missing in the second list here so far, what is missing in the second list so far at this point is the median. Let's put down the median. Median is 550. Oh, this was 550. Median cannot be 550 because this says 450, but it's way over here. 450 should have been here. 450 should have been here. And the median for the second one is. 550, which, which, which is right here, which is where I, probably where I got confused. There we go. If this is all that is given to us, if this is all that is given to us, what sort of observations can we make? Let's see what we can do here. This is the interquartile range from here, or rather, here, yeah, the interquartile range for the second set of observation, and here's the interquartile range from here, 300 to 700. The middle 50% of the population falls between seven, 300 and 700, interquartile range being 400, and here the middle 50% of the population falls between 400 and 600, and interquartile range being only 200. Let's put it, let's summarize everything as to what we learned. I left no room for, no room, no room for us to work at, in a, at all. I should have thought ahead of time. We're going to condense everything here. So first the range. Here is list A, which is this list right here, and list B, which is this list right here. The range goes from 200 to 700. Or rather, from 200 all the way, the lowest value of 200 to highest value of 750. 750 minus 200 is 550. It's more spread out than what we see here. It goes from 250 to 700. 700 minus 200 would have been 500, so it's 450. As you can see, it's more condensed here. The first quartile, if you, if you look at the box, is 300 right here. And first quartile here is 400. And if you think in terms of exam, if you think of it in terms of exam, and two classes took the, took a similar exam, same exam, were given to two school or two classes or, or two different district, we can see that 
25 percent of students in this one is scored below 300 whereas here 25 percent of students score below 400 it's a much higher cutoff point much higher cutoff point second quartile which is the median which is the median 50 percent of the students in this school scored This was 500, this is 450. 450 tells us that 50% of the students scored below 450 in the first list, in the first, first district, and 50% of the students scored above 450. What about the second district? It's, it's way over here, 550. As you can see, the second quartile, as the second, second list, it's very much condensed and there is not, of a, not much of a disparity between the poor students and the good students. They are all very close to each other. The 50% of the population is scored between 450 and 550 as opposed to 50% of the population is scoring between 300 and 400. No, between, between, between 300 And 700, I meant to say. In the in the first one, is between 300 and 700, and here is between 400 and 600. Interquartile range. Interquartile range. For the first list, it goes from 300 to 700. A range of 400. 50% of students had a range of 400 in the middle 50% from the highest score in the middle 50% being 700 and the lowest score being 300. It's very much spread out whereas over here it's very condensed between 400 and 600. 400 and 600. And that is the interquartile range which is the middle 50% of the population. The Q3 minus the Q1, the middle 50% of the observations. And that's about it. But there is a lot of things you can tell from a box plot. What are some of the things you can tell from the box plot? Well, the endpoints tell us the range, the range for all the observations. And then we look at the box itself. If you look at the box itself, it tells you where the box begins and where the box ends. The beginning of the box and the ending of the box tells us the range of the middle 50%, which is what is known as interquartile range. Interquartile range is the range of the middle 50% of the observation. And finally, if you look at the whisker part, that tells you the median, that's the 50th percentile. It tells you the marker above which 50% of the observation lie and below which 50% uh, of the observation lie. It rise, lies right in the center, even though it may not look in the center in the box, but that's what that marker indicates. This marker indicates the point where 50% of the observations lie above that value and 50% of the observations lie below that value. So those are the things it tells us the box plot. It tells you the range, it tells you the interquartile range, it tells you the median. It does give us a very good idea of what a spread is like. It does give you actually a fairly good idea of what the dispersion is like. As you can see, it's more widely dispersed here, the observations in the first data set than it is in the second data set. However, the more complicated and more sophisticated uh, tool, the, there is one that exists, which is what is known as, as we said in the beginning, the standard deviation. And that actually is the best way to go about it, but that requires a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, calculation. Back in the old days, it's not an issue now, but back in the old days when things were done by hand, it actually was very time consuming, very laborious. Nowadays, of course, we can do it on a computer with a click of a mouse. But even though we can do it with a click of a mouse, we do need to understand what is going on behind the curtain. How is it done? How is it calculated? What does it represent? Why is it done the way it is done? And all of those things. And those are the things we'll discuss tomorrow when we do the lesson on standard deviation. And as I said before, we'll go through the five-step process that is, in, or that is required to calculate the standard deviation by using the example that you see there on the same page, example 4.2.8 4 on page number 297, same page where we are right now. We'll do it tomorrow, okay? Bye now.